So in the last video, I showed you how to install a flex boss and a grid boss, an entire whole home backup, but I didn't explain what it is. So this will be a beginner friendly guide on the basics of what these things are. So first off, the flex boss is a large inverter. And when you take this device and you connect it to a large battery, it creates AC power so you can run appliances or anything you would find in a home that's connected to a breaker panel. Next, the inverter is considered an all-in-one because it also has a solar charge controller. So the inverter is the heart of the system. You connect the solar panels, the batteries, and the loads, and it manages the power. If you want a larger system, you have to add more inverters and make them talk to each other so that they work together. And then they can create more power. There's a larger capacity for loads. Now let's say you want to power your house with an inverter. One way to do it is to disconnect the grid and run everything with your inverter. But a lot of people like having the convenience of the grid. Let's say it gets a little rainy for a whole week and you run out of power. It's nice to connect to the grid when the sun is not available. But to legally connect to the grid with an off-grid system is a little difficult. If the grid were to go down, the inverter needs to disconnect itself from the grid because it doesn't want to backfeed that power that you generated into the grid or into your neighborhood. So what a lot of systems do is that they have a transfer switch. This is a large switch that switches your entire home to your off-grid solar power system. That way, if the grid were to go down, you can run everything off of your solar and your batteries. If you have enough, you have to have enough power generation to run your house. So the transfer switch is just a large switch that switches between grid power and off-grid power. Now, some manufacturers have solved this problem by putting a large 200 amp transfer switch inside the inverter itself, like the Solark or the 18K PV. That way your off-grid solar power system can switch between the grid or the batteries whenever it needs to. And this works great, but it's very hard to scale. If you need more power, you're gonna have to buy a second unit. And to wire those all up, it costs a lot of money. So what a lot of companies are doing, like Tesla Powerwall, the EP Cube, and now EG4 with the Flexboss, is that they sell a gateway. And the gateway connects everything together. It connects your entire off-grid system to your house and the grid, and it manages all of that. But the gateway also makes it easier to expand your system and to add more inverters or more batteries or more solar. So really the gateway is an intelligent transfer switch that is made to work with an off-grid solar power system. And a lot of these gateways have lots of cool features like load shedding. So if you have too much power, it has somewhere to put it and you get to decide where it goes. It can be electric heaters, a water heater, or whatever you wish. Next, some gateways can allocate what loads are critical and what are not. So if you want your furnace to be on no matter what, even if the grid were to go down and you don't have that many batteries, you can say that that's a critical load and you can wire it as so in the gateway. Because if you have a really small system and it can't keep up with powering your whole house when the grid were to go down, it's nice to have some of the most important loads loads or the critical loads still powered with off-grid power. Or if your generation is low because there's bad weather, it's nice to have the option to still power your critical loads. And those are separated. Like in the grid boss, it has a whole separate lug just for adding a panel for critical loads. Now, if you have plenty of solar panels and batteries, you don't have to worry about this. You can just run everything off of solar without issue. But it really depends on your use case and what kind of weather you have and how much money you have and all sorts of things. Also, these gateways typically connect to grid tie inverters. So if you already have a solar system on your roof, you can connect that to the gateway with your new battery system. So you can take an old system and upgrade it with a battery and the gateway will manage all of it. Even if the brands do not mix, you can put them all together with these gateways. Even with the EP Cube, I have some Delta inverters and they're plugged right into it. And I can monitor it on the app and see everything that's going on. Now, if you wanna run your system off grid, you have to have some form of transfer switch, whether it's in the 18K PV or if it's in the gateway, but you have to have it. For example, if you buy three 18K PVs, that's three 200 amp transfer switches, and those things are very expensive. So all of these companies are figuring out that they can have a stack of batteries, an inverter, and then they all connect to a gateway. 
and then the gateway only has one transfer switch. And when the transfer switch is in the gateway, it's usually easy to mount it between the meter and your house's panel. So you just throw that thing up on the wall and then you connect everything else to it. Previously, you'd have to fit everything between your meter and your panel. And that's very difficult when you have large, heavy batteries. And if the transfer switch is in each 18 kPV, for example, or a Solark, that means that you have to run those large cables to each and every single one. The gateway cleans up that mess entirely. It's very easy and cheap to wire up one gateway, and it's really cheap to add more inverters to that. Also, it organizes your system. If you think about the wiring schematic for having multiple transfer switches in one system, it's hard for a beginner to understand. But with these gateway systems, you just throw the gateway up and then you connect whatever you want to it. You could have just one inverter, or you could have multiple micro inverters. You pretty much create your own micro grid in essence. And your batteries, your loads, your solar panels can feed in and out when necessary. Now the majority of these systems are moving in this direction. They almost all have gateways now because it's easy, it's simple, and you can put the batteries and the inverters where you need. Instead of running massive expensive cables all over the place and trying to cram it into one spot next to your meter. Also, it seems like the laws favor these gateways. It just makes the system more easy. Instead of having multiple boxes, disconnect switches, and all these large conductors, you just have a single box and you feed everything in and out. Imagine if you're an inspector just checking that system out versus the others. It's a lot easier. Now recently, even the Jackery, which is a solar generator, has its own transfer switch with a critical loads panel. So these things are pervading the entire industry. Now if you're running your system off grid, you do not need a gateway at all. You don't need a transfer switch because you're not connected to the grid. In that situation, you can have an inverter and a panel and you're done. And if you need more power, you just need more inverters and more batteries. And then connect more solar and that's it. The gateway is only when you're using your system with the grid. And if you have to switch between the grid and your off-grid system, that's it. It's just a large switch in essence. So I hope that made sense. Please let me know if you have any more questions down below. I saw lots of beginners questioning it. I was like, oh my gosh, I should have covered that. So yeah, that is what a gateway is and that's what all these new systems are all about. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.